Welcome back to another JoJo chapter review. This time we're taking a look at Chapter 11 of the JoJo Lands titled The Hustle Part 2. Last time we finally started a fight with the real first antagonist of the part, the supposed owner of the Lava Rock. This time we pick up right where we left off with Dragona using smooth operators to remove their wound. This is actually a really easy task with their ability and they just shift it onto a nearby wine bottle causing it to break in half. Usagi is relieved that Dragona is okay and starts saying that this trip made him realize that he's in love. However, Dragona doesn't really care at all and is focused on getting the lava rock. Usagi says that since the guy was carrying a knife, if they just ask his stand for a metal detector, they can use it to find him. However, they ignore him and start following his blood trail instead. They head to a nearby parking lot and Paco says that they can find the user by touching him since his skin felt grainy like sand. Leo from the previous chapter comes back and the group corner them in their car to see if they're the culprit. Jodio realizes that the user is actually fused into the car itself and narrowly avoids being attacked by him. He disappears and they lose track of him completely, but notice the luxury watch starts sliding towards the beach. They realize that the mechanism of the lava rock is attracting it and that can be used to track the enemy. Dragona is able to use the movement of the diamond to find the right direction. They head into the ocean to try and bait the enemy into attacking. Usagi starts getting nervous and thinks they should cut their losses, but Dragona says that their whole purpose for being there is to make money and that they should finish what they started. The enemy cleverly disguises himself as a wave crashing up on shore to get behind Paco and cuts his leg. But Jodio grabs him and they fall into the water. He says that he was kind to Jodio and gave him a chance to hand over the lava rock, but that now he's going to kill him. Jodio activates November Rain, hitting the user and breaking his knife. However, the raindrops from the stand only work on the surface of the water and can only reach a short distance under. Jodio decides to try and drown the enemy by holding onto his arm and then using his stand to sink a raft from above to get air for himself. The rest of the team keep watching from land and know that Jodio is okay since his stand is still active. Paco says that he's decided they should actually try to get the enemy to join them. He says that he got a good impression of the guy, and that the three cats he saw dead earlier was actually just another one of his illusions, and it was really just three potatoes. He says that the guy knows more about the mechanism of the lava rock than even Rohan, so he might be useful, and tells Dragona to get Jodio to stop drowning him. Meanwhile, a man nearby pulls up a fish that had swallowed the watch. Leo and his girlfriend are still searching for it by the shore, and she gives up on it since it was probably broken by falling into the ocean. The chapter ends with her leaving him behind. This was another really good chapter. Like the last one, seeing a full-scale stand battle like this is refreshing since we haven't gotten one for quite some time. Honestly, I think this new stand has to be my favorite of the part so far, and it may be one of the most creative abilities Araki has ever come up with. All of the tactics used on both sides of the battle here are just classic JoJo, with everyone playing some kind of role in the chapter without seeming like bystanders. We also have the possibility of the enemy actually joining. Until we learn a bit more about him, I can't say for sure if he actually would. But we do seem to have a hint of him not being all bad with the reveal that the cats never actually died. So I think it's a definite possibility. Something odd about that is that unlike most parts, we already have a full group of characters right off the bat, so it didn't even occur to me that they would add more to the team. Most of all, I'm interested in learning more about the enemy since like Paco said, they seem to have more knowledge of the Lava Rock, and once we know more about that, we'll have a much better idea of what the story will be going forward. With the possibility that this character is a rock human like I suspect, that could also be our first instance of a rock human ally in the series. Some of the rock humans were portrayed with some sympathy back in Part 8, so it would be interesting to see Araki commit to that idea and let us understand a rock human character from their unique perspective. One last thing I want to go over from the chapter though is the current position of the watch, which might end up being really important. At the end we saw that it was swallowed by a fish and brought to shore by a fisherman. However, if we're to believe that the lava rock is still with the enemy, why would it appear here? There's a couple possibilities here. One is that he does still have the rock and the watch being caught and pulled up is just one step in the series of events that will get it from here to the rock. However, what I find more likely is that he doesn't actually have the rock on him right now and stashed it somewhere, which is why the watch seems to be following a path away from the user. Hopefully we'll figure out this little mystery soon, and I think the answer is going to teach us a lot more about how exactly the rock's mechanism functions. 
Overall, I really didn't have too much to say in this review. Ironically, because of a lot of action actually happening in the chapter, it means there's a lot less to go over other than the basic course of events. However, I think once we get some real dialogue between the group and the enemy, and we start to know his actual motivation, I'll have a lot more to say. If you want to be updated on new videos, subscribe and click the notification bell. You can also join the Hum and Beat Discord to know when videos and chapters release and any important JoJo news. Finally, I'd appreciate if you help support the channel on Patreon. There you'll receive Discord perks, and you can submit patron questions. I usually answer a question at the end of my main videos, so feel free to join at any tier and submit as many as you like. You can send them on my Patreon's member chat on the mobile app, or directly to me through Patreon DMs. Thank you for watching. This is the part of the video where I thank my $5 and up patrons. Thank you to Sloth Dog, Doorbell, Crayon, Rigo Vids, Zucato, Pumpkin Doge, Marrow, Almighty Quarth, Gatlin Grove, Lime Jinjo, Sponge Cake, Kakext, Feliciano Rabaja, Rayana Meme, Christian McDonough, Emmanuel Etienne, Pulse Dog, Great Riek, Carmotrina, Adam Grogan, Zach Greenfield, FIFO, Rob Goliath, Jacob Smith, Professor Foosball, Ryan Ramirez, Big T, C Manga, Minty, and Gold.